With any YouTube channel, you're going to get sort of reoccurring themes or characters. I've got my Dax and Cash, I've got Terrariums, I've got my Art, I've got Pineapples, I've got all those sorts of things. But one thing that always comes to mind when I think back to the days of my channel, or I think about something that always pops up again in videos, is the ISO Project. My little isopod bioactive vivarium that has been with me pretty much since I started making videos that weren't just recordings of my fish tank. And the ice project was a little bioactive terrarium I made one day, or I guess a vivarium, that I just made kind of because I was bored. I was watching Dustin Pack and I was like, all right, he made one. Why don't I make one? And it's really funny to me because it's such a random project, but it ended up holding some of the most viewed videos on my channel. And one thing I've never really done, I've done it slightly in other videos, but I've never really talked about the logistics and like the details of the ice project in detail. I've never really talked about its successes and failures, and um, I've never really gone into detail about how I run it and how maintenance is and all that kind of thing. Usually my videos are basically just, you know, footage of me collecting stuff and then relaxing stolen music while I escape it, and then footage of an update that may exist as a separate video, you know. But I didn't want to do that today because I've done that to death. I wanted to make a new and different video and I've been wanting to make this video for some time. So this video is just going to be a simple, easy to follow guide of the successes and failures of the ISO project. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, okay, what the hell is an ISO project? I clicked on this because it said bioactive vivarium something like rather. Well, the ISO project didn't have a goal at first, but eventually it slowly became, I think by the third video, the goal slowly evolved over time and it became to create a bioactive, self-sustaining, and aesthetically appealing ecosystem that would house many different species. And these species would vary from like slugs, isopods, snails, centipedes, millipedes, and worms. That's kind of the ones I've outlined because those are the ones that generally I see in there and that, you know, stay in there for long periods of time. So there you go. So in that little research question, whatever you want to call it, I kind of outlined three major points. Self-sustaining, aesthetically pleasing, and housing many species. Now for each of these points, I'm going to set up the goal and then give the success rate a number out of 10 and then I'll talk about how you know it works in a bit more detail. Number one, self-sustaining. The goal behind self-sustaining was to have something that could essentially run itself, something that wouldn't require feeding, maintenance such as watering and trimming, and uh, would also not impede the other goals. So by this I mean I wouldn't have to touch it and you know, it would still remain aesthetically pleasing. Or if I left it alone for a few months, I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, all the ice pods devouring the slug, something like that, right? I'm gonna give this five out of 10 because it fits for itself, but it fails on the other accounts. So meaning requiring feeding, not necessarily, requiring maintenance, not really, but if you wanna care about the aesthetically pleasing and housing many species goals, then yeah, I unfortunately have to do those things. So I'm gonna give it only a five out of 10. So. When it comes to self-sustaining, it's somewhere between yes and no. This thing can run itself for a few months without me feeding it or anything, but again, I consider this failure because it impedes the other factors. Feeding isn't a huge issue. I'll usually just chuck in some like old cucumbers or like any other vegetables or occasionally some fresh ones. Or, you know, if a mystery snail falls out of my tank and dries up, then, you know, that's a good snack for them too. And, you know, when my hatchet fish all kill each other, you know, those were a good snack for them too. Um, in addition to that, sometimes we'll get lucky with the plants and they're usually moss dies because moss, most moss, as far as I'm aware, prefers nutrient poor soil. So what happens is the ice pods, because there's so many of them, they create a lot of waste and it creates a lot of, like a lot of nutrients in the soil and that's not good for the moss. So that ends up kind of, in addition to the high amounts of moisture and all that, I guess it kind of rots and gets eaten. That's at least what I've observed. I don't know why else that would happen, but I have had some plants, for example, this vine that I was ripping out at the start. Um, that was growing non-stop thanks to that amount of uh, moisture and that amount of uh, poop from the isopods essentially. So that kind of helped to keep it running in that regard. But And they also were able to feed off old bark and like decaying plant matter in there. So it was definitely self-sustaining, but again, impeded the other factors. Number two is aesthetically pleasing. Now by this, I meant something that would look nice. Now success rate, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 because every time I've revamped this thing, which I've done a lot and I'll explain why in a second, it loses its luster because, you know, eventually, again, as I mentioned, the moss will deteriorate, the isopods will eat it. A plant will die because the humidity or like moisture in there is too much because this area is a temperate rainforest, so it's not used to being super humid. So those can be issues that it comes across. But generally, when it is aesthetically pleasing, it remains aesthetically pleasing. And uh, another project related to this I want to talk about is the moss wall. The moss wall was a constant struggle and goal. Now, there are easy ways to make moss walls. I'm not going to say ridiculous easy ways, but, you know, you've seen like Serpa Design and those terrarium channels make moss walls. There are ways to make moss walls. I don't do those ways of making moss walls. Why? Because I'm an idiot. 
Um, now, originally what I did is I just wood glued a bunch of bark to the back and a bunch of moss. And um, eventually that didn't work because eventually the, the glue would uh, dry up and eventually it wouldn't adhere to the glass anymore. So the wood would just fall off into the terrarium and it looks stupid and the isopods would just devour the rotten wood. And of course the wood would rot as well. So the new method I devised was just getting large, tall pieces of bark, like tall and thin. And I would just stick them into the substrate so they would kind of lean against the back and then I could glue moss onto those. And the final method I devised was that uh, was actually using hot glue. That's what I used in the most recent one because it dries way faster, so it's a lot easier to complete it. You can get it done in like five minutes rather than like 35. You know, it's, it's not ridiculously frustrating enough to hold the piece of bark there for 20 minutes or some ridiculous stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And um, another thing I want to say is the reason I don't mind revamping it is that it's fun. You know, I like seeing this thing go through phases. I like being like, looking back at all these photos and videos and being like, wow, this thing has changed so much. I just, I always like that factor about it. So I don't really mind that it doesn't stay aesthetically pleasing. The third goal is probably one of the most important and one of the reasons I actually wanted to make this video in the first place, and that is housing many species. Now I'm giving this success rate an eight out of 10 because I've kind of reconciled and figured out how to do this. It's called the ISO project. It is dominated by the ice spots. And you know, that makes sense. You know, you'd expect the ISO project to be mostly about isopods. But again, the goal was not to create an ice pod terrarium. The, well, that was the original goal, but the goal then became to house an environment for a variety of different species. Now, why does this fail? Well, first of all, the ice pods breed way too fast. And you can see here, I'm actually dumping out a bunch of them because there are way too many ice pods in here. And uh, this is something that's kind of gonna impede on the self-sustaining levels. They definitely don't become like so many, they're like crawling all over the walls all night. But when I feed them, sometimes it is ridiculous how many there are. I'll, I'll put a picture on screen. It, it, it's kind of disgusting. It, it really is. I like ice pods. I think they're kind of cute, but seeing that many is, is really gross, I'll be honest. But the issue with isopods is that they are carnivorous. So in the ice project, there are earthworms, centipedes, slugs, and snails. There were at some point. I don't think there are anymore. I occasionally see little baby, like bluish ones, but not too many anymore. And also uh, millipedes. And it's actually this factor that has contributed to the largest problem I've had with this project. Isopods are carnivorous, which leads me to the simple factor. Do not keep slugs with isopods at least larger ones. So you can keep small slugs pretty confidently because they can probably find a place to curl up and sleep. And also, again, if you're like me and you're occasionally, you have an aquarium and you've got mystery snails that breed like hell and occasionally die, and then you feed them to the ice pods, you're gonna have, you know, they're gonna be supplied with some level of like meat. However, isopods and also those cute little garden snails are omnivores. They eat meat, they eat plants. Omnivore does not mean can eat meat, it means we'll eat meat. You see that cute little squishy slug? Yeah. Ice pod hasn't gotten meat in a while. Ice pod's gonna eat that slug. They're not hunters. They're not gonna hunt your slug down. They're not gonna prey on it like a pack of wolves, but they take an opportunity. If there is a big slug sleeping there in your little terrarium up against the glass and your little ice pods haven't had meat in a while, slug dinner. For the ice pods. Now I've combated this again by providing the occasional dead mystery snail or dead fish to compensate for meat, which seems to be working. In addition, the slugs I've been keeping, they're very small. With these smaller slugs, they can kind of hide themselves a bit better. The slugs are really the only big issue. I just really wanted to bring that up because people watch that first video and I don't want people putting slugs with ice pods because people aren't gonna know. I didn't know. I don't expect people who wanna keep slugs to really know that because there's not a lot of information on keeping slugs and ice pods together. It's not really a popular hobby. Like I thought fish keeping was a niche hobby, but my God, but regardless, it's very important to keep in mind. Now, snails typically okay. I haven't had a problem with them. Snails go in their shell. Ice pods don't typically go in the shell after them. I have seen ice pods in the snail shell before, but I'm pretty sure, like I'll show some footage right here of an ice pod in a snail shell, but this snail was, I'm pretty sure he was dead for a while. So they were just eating, you know, the dead snail instead of attacking the living one. In general, I'd say the ice project fails Based on the criteria originally set up, the ISO project is kind of a failure. If it had fit my original criteria, it would continue to look the way I want it to look without maintenance and house a variety of species without any of these problems. But the point of a project like this is that it has taught me so much random useless information. Like, did I ever need to know that you can't keep big slugs with ice pods because they might get eaten? Hell no. But you know what? It's kind of fun that I do because now I can make a video like this. And I want 
to make sure that information is known. Because that video gets so many views. I want people to watch this and realize, do not keep slugs with ice pods if they're too big. Okay? I want to make this video to kind of update you on the ice project and kind of tell you all those little kinks that are in it. And even though the ice project is ultimately a failure, I enjoy keeping it. It's fun. I like doing the revamps. I like how it changes and it's always evolving. I like how I'll add new bugs and critters into there sometimes. I like adding new plants. I like removing stuff. It's just, it's a fun project overall. And I like seeing how it evolves. But that's it, guys. I'm the Spiritual Fish Lad. I just wanted to give you guys a little update and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll take you through the final tour of the finalized updated ISO project. So here's the finalized thing. You can see I've done the moss wall with the hot glue, as I mentioned. You can see there's a lot of sticks and leaf litter in here. And those will be both aesthetically pleasing and eventually food for the ice pods once the moisture breaks them down enough so they can eat them. Uh, there's a lot of different weed-like plants in here. I've got a little oxalis and a fern as well and some lichen on some sticks. Just kind of a general, very like backyard biotope is what I like to call it. It's just stuff from my backyard, really. That's all it is. Of course, some of the sticks and bark were collected locally. I've left some of that vine. I think it's called Morning Glory, but I've left a little bit of that because I didn't like how it was taking over the entire thing, but I still like the look of it. So I'm hoping I might have to keep it at bay a bit. So that does, again, fail on the uh, self-sustaining goal, but I don't really mind. It's not going to be that hard to deal with. And of course, if I do give up on that and it totally takes over the thing, then I just get to revamp it again. So I don't really mind that. But yeah. Oh, and of course, there's a little bird there. I think that's pretty cute. But anyways, guys, yeah, that's me. And I hope you liked this video. And I'm going to spam this on all the old videos that get views so people understand. Do not keep slugs with isopods if your slugs are big. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.